Welcome to Toy Polloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Polloi. Now this is not my normal sort of restoration, but it's still a toy and it is still a restoration. At a recent flea market that we went to, I managed to pick up a big box of Pippa toys. As you can see here, we have uh, Pippa's Range Rover from the camper set. Now Pippa was a 1970s toy line made by Palatoy and Mrs. Toy Polloi absolutely loves these toys. So I thought I'd pick up this box and restore all the bits in it for her so that she can add them to her collection. As you can see, here this Range Rover is in a pretty dirty state and it has a few things broken on it but everything on here looks like it should be fixable it just looks like it's been played with and enjoyed thoroughly and a few bits are broken over the years so let's take a look at what's broken and we'll see what needs fixing so I've just moved Pippa and her friends out of the way for the moment so we can take a look at the Land Rover and see what is broken. The most obvious thing obviously is this door uh, is uh, broken and detached and really uh, all of the things on this toy are pretty simple uh, in construction. This door has a little hinge here which just has two little pegs one at the top and obviously you can see the one at the bottom is missing and that's what holds the door in place so that has snapped off at some point and the door has fallen off so I reckon we can uh, easily fix that it does look like someone at some point glued uh, the original little peg back on but the peg is missing unless it's inside so we're going to have to work out a way of replacing that but that shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue uh, likewise if we go to the back of the vehicle it has a sort of lift up little flap on the top section and again it's missing one of the little tabs off the end it should have one like that on both sides so a similar problem that also needs fixing uh, if we turn this round you can see the back of uh, the uh, Land Rover uh, something has happened to this back flap it's been pushed in by the looks of it because it doesn't sit in place and I don't really want to sort of pull it out of the way at the moment um, in case there is something that I can't see that uh, I will break so I think that does need to be taken apart it's also filthy as you look inside you can see obviously this toy is um, you know 30 well nearly 40 years old so it's obviously been in the loft somewhere and it's filthy uh, absolutely full of dirt uh, it does look like as well someone has glued uh, the little um, a gear lever in place there or that may just be dirt on it I can't see it does it's very hard to tell from this distance so I think really first thing we're going to have to do is to strip this down uh, into its basic parts so that we can clean all of the mess off uh, I can see there's also sticky tape residue and all sorts over it so I think this is going to need a thorough clean first and then once we've got it apart we should be able to see how that we can fix these other bits and any other broken issues uh, on the inside of this vehicle because this is an old toy it should be relatively easy to get inside of it uh, normally old toys are pretty sort of easily constructed and generally have screws on the bottom uh, which is just the case on this one you can see if I turn it over there are uh, eight screws all around the bottom and by unscrewing that we should then be able to take the top off it looks like some of these screws have actually been screwed in pretty hard at some point uh, I guess this is probably in the construction phase because it's actually split the plastic so we may have a few issues when we come to take this off uh, that the plastic is damaged underneath but the only way to find out is to get a screwdriver and to start unscrewing them and we'll see what happens So I've just undone these two back screws and immediately the bumper has come off so that's uh, one thing you just have to remember where it goes and actually now that that bumper has come off the uh, back panel uh, has come off as well and it looks like nothing is actually broken on that it's just that it's uh, sort of fallen out of the two little uh, sockets that it was supposed to be in so that's great news that means that's not something that doesn't need fixing uh, it was just loose um, so carry on uh, taking the rest of the screws out and we'll see what else we find. I've now undone all of the screws on the bottom and uh, the front bumper has come off as well but you can see the damage that's been caused to these bits of pink plastic that hold everything together I think this was actually done when the vehicle was first made because it doesn't look like this has ever been taken apart so they obviously really overdid these screws on these and have actually damaged the plastic everything is sort of holding in place so I don't, th don't think we need to reinforce or repair any of that but it's just interesting to see that uh, when this was constructed it was actually sort of broken to start with so now we can try and take this whole thing apart it looks uh, a little bit sort of fiddly actually because everything is sort of I can't really work out how we're even going to do this because you've got to sort of slide things in and out I reckon everything should slide one way uh, we'll just have to see what happens 
This is actually more complicated than it would seem just because of the way this uh, toy is constructed. It looks like originally this toy was put together and then this little panel here was glued in place uh, and that sort of holds on the front bonnet. Uh, but I don't want to break the plastic uh, or break the glue to take that piece off. So to get the thing apart, you've, I've actually had to just sort of gently prise the plastic. You can It bends quite sort of gently, but if you're gentle with it, I mean, because you don't want it to snap. And you can sort of gently work all the little clips off the side and there we have it the top has now come off but that really isn't designed to come apart you can clearly see the glue here where this bit has been uh, glued in place uh, after everything else is put together but it is possible to take it apart i'm hoping that i can then get this back together but now this is apart that means that we can actually see all the bits inside and give everything a good clean uh, and looking at this it doesn't look like the gear stick has uh, been broken that's just i don't know what that is but there's some really disgusting little bit of uh, old dirt on there and you can see the filth on this uh, uh, toy. So next thing I'm going to do is to give this all a good wash. I'm going to just put it into some hot soapy water and use a toothbrush to clean everything off and clean as much dirt off as possible. Uh, when it comes to things like the stickers I'm not going to submerse this in the water because I don't really want those to get that damaged. So I'm just going to use a toothbrush to put the water on and uh, clean it. Now once everything is as clean as possible I'm going to use a little bit of lighter fluid to uh, remove some of these uh, bits of sticky sort of residue that are on here. We should be able to clean this up and make it look pretty nice and new. So let's go ahead and do that. It takes about 20 minutes to wash a toy of this sort of size because there's quite a lot of little sort of fiddly areas that will need uh, close attention to get make sure all of the dirt is taken out of it. And uh, don't be worried if you do get water on the stickers. Sometimes that can't be helped. As long as you let them dry out at the end, they should be fine. If any do come loose, then you can just re-stick them with some Pritt stick or some other uh, mild glue. So after having a good wash, this is how it looks. The uh, toy is actually looking an awful lot better. Uh, just taking the grime off uh, makes it look much nicer and almost as good as new. Actually, while I was doing all of the washing, one of the bits I mentioned earlier has actually come unstuck. As you can see here, this little front panel uh, just above the engine sort of compartment, uh, the glue actually came apart on there. So uh, that's going to make it much easier to put the toy back together. And I can then just glue that with a little bit of super glue at the end of it. Now, there are still a few little marks left on it. At some point, because this door had broken, uh, someone had actually stuck it. Uh, it looks like it's been stuck in place with a bit of sellotape. So there's some uh, sellotape residue around the top here, around here, and also on the side of the door. So to get rid of that, we're just going to use the sort of standard trick of some lighter fluid. This is very good for removing sticky marks. All you need to do is get some lighter fluid, put it onto a bit of kitchen towel, and then gently rub over the glue marks. And you'll see they come off almost immediately. Um, and any other sort of mild little marks or sort of uh, scuffs of paint should be removed this way as well. So that you can see that's taken the little glue marks off that quite nicely. So I've just got a few more to do before we start fixing the rest of the toy. Anything that's uh, a bit more sort of stuck on like this, wipe it with the uh, light fluid and then just rub a fingernail over it and it will come off with ease. You can see there it's all coming off quite nicely. Now that the car is all clean, we can get on and fix the two broken uh, hinges that are the main problem of this vehicle. Now we're going to use the same fix for both things. If we look at the uh, doors here, you can see this is the unbroken one and this is the broken one on the left. Uh, and it's basically there's a large rod missing. Uh, and if you've watched some of my previous restorations, you'll know that often when I fix things like this, the best place to look is Lego. And again, we are going to use Lego to fix this. I have a pot here of useful bits of Lego that I always tend to keep around. And again, uh, we're going to use the Lego Lance. The Lego Lance is a particularly useful um, weapon that you can buy from uh, the sort of Lego line because it comes with a very long uh, sort of straight piece of plastic. And as is seems to be always the case with this, the measurements of this long piece of plastic and the diameter of the little rod is perfect. It's an almost perfect match for uh, the plastic that's missing. The only problem is the colour. But on this instance, uh, this hinge is actually hidden inside the uh, car so it doesn't actually matter what the color is so what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of this lego lance and cut it 
to be about the right length and then glue it in place. Now obviously the problem is you don't want to just glue it on the end here, it's got nothing to hold on to. So we're actually going to trim this plastic back up by about a centimetre and then glue this in place. So there's a lot of area for this to be glued onto and a lot of surface for it to stick onto. So first thing to do is to actually trim back this bit of plastic so that we've got a sort of large area that we can glue onto. So let's get that done. Now I use a pair of plastic nippers to uh, trim plastic. Uh, with this old plastic I'm never really sure how it's going to react to being cut. Sometimes it splits, sometimes it does all sorts of things. So I'm going to go very slowly and just carefully sort of mark my way in about a centimetre up uh, the sort of hinge. You can see here that it's starting to get a few stress marks so it's, it's you've just got to go fairly slowly with it and just gently work your way in and hopefully we can cut this out pretty neatly. Anything that's sort of left we can just use a little file to uh, trim away so just gently cut that through. That's not looking too bad so I'm now going to cut off uh, this last sort of vertical bit here and again I'm going to do it in stages so I'm going to chop off sort of part of it first as you can see and then I'm going to keep working my way back. Doing it in stages means that if you're less likely to go wrong uh, and cause sort of a serious problem. So just keep trimming that back. There you go. I'm pretty happy with that. That's a sort of a, a reasonable area taken out, and that gives you a good area, a good sort of surface area to glue the uh, new bit of plastic on. If I just hold up the bit of Lego. You can see that it's quite a nice surface. We're obviously going to flatten down this as well so that it will be flat as well. So let's work out how much of this we need and then trim up the edge and glue it in place. To work out how much we need I'm just going to put the two uh, together. Obviously I've got an unbroken one here so you can use it as a good guide. So if I hold that there you can see that we need about this much. So I'm just going to trim that off. And then just double check that in case I've cut it too short. No, that looks good. So now I'm just going to flatten one side of this uh, so that it's got a, again a better surface to uh, glue onto. So I'm just going to use a small scalpel here and I'm going to gently, if I again might as well do it absolutely precisely, mark how much I need to trim it down by. And then I'm just going to gently cut the edge of this off to make it slightly flatter. It doesn't need to be perfect but it's good to try and get it close as possible. Like so. And then we can just hold this up and check that it actually is going to fit. You can see that's quite a good match already. So once that's glued in place that should have quite a nice area to uh, stick onto and it should glue pretty firmly. So now we can uh, glue this in place. I'm just going to use some normal super glue here and I'm going to gently put a little bit on the original bit that I've cut there and then we can grab the piece of Lego. Now I have added a few little sort of score marks onto the edge of the Lego that I've cut flat there just so that there's a bit more area for, and surface for the glue to adhere to. Then we can push this in place and we'll let that set and I'll rub off any glue that's sort of squeezed out afterwards. To test that this fix works I've just quickly slotted the car back together and uh, it's a little bit fiddly because this whole car is sort of on the verge of falling apart because there's no screws in it but you can actually see that the door does work now and opens and closes so by the time this is all uh, stuck together and uh, well not stuck together but screwed back together that is going to be quite a good fix so we can now get on and fix the uh, rear sort of uh, well, I don't know what we call, call that boot flat sort, sort of thing so we'll get that one fixed as well. We can use a similar fix for this uh, rear window piece as well. As you can see there's a little tab on this side and it's snapped off on this side. So again the same sort of Lego lance or equivalent uh, will match. It's actually slightly smaller the, uh, the little peg on this one. As you can see it's slightly smaller but I don't think that's going to make much difference. I've checked the uh, Lego lance in the hole on the vehicle and this does actually fit so uh, it will work. I'm actually going to use a little bit of this which is called a hanger. Uh, and the only reason I'm using this is because it's yellow and it will match slightly better. I'm 
probably going to paint these when I'm done if I can find a pink paint. I think the grey will stand out a bit too much and these hangers are exactly the same sort of dimensions. And again you can just cut them using uh, plastic nippers and they cut really quite nicely. You can see you get quite a good edge on there. So what I'm going to do is uh, carefully nip off a little bit of this. Um, again there's not that much to work with on this one so it's a little bit more fiddly so I'm just going to try and cut a slight sort of angled bit so that there's slightly more surface there. So something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to do, make a piece out of this which is an equivalent sort of length but with an angled end to it. So if we just sort of look at that one. Again you might have to do this by eye just a little bit of sort of hit and miss uh, making. Sometimes you can't make it right the first time. So there you go. I've made a piece with a slight angle to it and we'll just see if we can line that up. As you can see that's a slightly wrong angle, it needs to be slightly shallower. So I'll just keep doing that until I've got a piece that looks about right and then we can glue that in place. So I've now chopped this piece, as you can see that's a much better fit and a much better angle and it's about the right length now. Uh, if I was really worried about the sort of the strength of this, uh, what I could do is drill a very small hole in there, maybe a one millimetre hole and then likewise a one millimetre hole in this and then stick a piece of paper clip in. But I think this is not going to get a great deal of stress on it so uh, just gluing this in place should work quite nicely. So let's go ahead and glue that and we'll see if we can fit that back inside the Land Rover. Now that the glue has had time to dry we can try and fit this and see if it works. Uh, I was going to paint this but I actually think this is going to be hidden pretty well by the uh, sort of side part of the, the top of this uh, Land Rover so I don't think I'm going to bother. Now getting this in is a little bit, uh, it feels like you're going to damage something because you've got to sort of put one end in. I'm going to put in the, the end I've glued and then sort of carefully bend and stretch everything like so and then you can just clip it in place. Uh, so that actually seems like it fits quite well and we can open it up and it hooks in place. So that's a pretty good fix. Uh, last thing to do really is just to put this uh, vehicle back together. So we've got one final bit which is a sort of back uh, little uh, trailer bit that goes on there. That also fits in place and then the bumper and then I can just screw this together and we'll see how the final thing looks. The last thing that needs fixing now I've screwed all of this together is this little bit of plastic here where it was glued at one point and uh, it sort of snapped while I was uh, doing the rest of the restoration. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to fix this. I'm really just going to drop a small bit of uh, super glue onto the plastic and uh, then just glue everything back together. It will it will take a few seconds to, to dry and uh, that should be fine. So that, just a little bit of glue on there and then squeeze it in place and we'll let that dry. And here we have the finished restored Land Rover. As you can see it's looking pretty nice. It's a lot cleaner than it was when it first arrived here. And uh, this was the door that was broken. As you can see you can now open that and close it quite nicely. Uh, the hinge uh, repair works perfectly on that one. If I show you the other door which wasn't broken you can see it works exactly the same way and still locks in place. If we turn the vehicle round so you can see the back of it, uh, the little sort of upper section of the uh, back door opens and the lower section now opens as well. That one wasn't broken, it's just been uh, sort of moved out of alignment. So we can shut that up all nicely. So there we have it, one fully restored vintage uh, Land Rover or Range Rover from the camper set from Pippa. Now obviously this is not my normal sort of restorations but a toy is a toy and I like restoring all sorts of toys. So I know my normal fans who enjoy the Star Wars and other sort of restorations won't appreciate this but I still enjoy Enjoy doing these things because toys of any sort uh, need to be sort of cared for and looked after and this is a toy that uh, Mrs Toyploy will add to her collection of Pippa dolls so it's been great fun to restore. Now if you've enjoyed this video and would like to help out Toyploy then please check out my Patreon page links to that are in the description for this video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.